Hi, my name is Trainmaster04, and today in this video I'll be reviewing an older model. In this case, it is a Baltimore, Ohio Big 6 2102 from Sunset Third Rail. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Union Pacific 4014, do you read me? Over. Roger that. Union Pacific 4014, I read you. Over. Start up and stand by. Over. Yes, sir. Start up and stand by. Let me start off with a brief history lesson on the real Big Sixes and how they played an important role on the Baltimore and Ohio. Baltimore and Ohio engine number 6175 is a part of the S1A class or S class of steam locomotives the Baltimore and Ohio purchased. The locomotive itself is designated a Santa Fe type or in this case Big Six steam locomotive with a 2102 wheel arrangement underneath the boiler. The reason why the B&O called their engines, or in this case 2102's Big Sixes, is due to the whole class starting with the number 6, in this case 6175, and also because the locomotives became some of the largest and most powerful locomotives the B&O ever purchased. The Big Sixes class originated in three different batches spanning over a large period of time. The first batch being designated Class S were built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1914 and were numbered 6000 through 6030. Next, the second batch came a decade later when the railroad was very pleased with their first batch and were designated S1s, built by, yet again, the Baldwin Locomotive Works between 1923 and 1924 and were numbered 6100 through 6149. And finally, the last batch came from both Lima Locomotive Works and Baldwin because the total number of units spanned a whopping 125 in all. The first set of these locomotives were designated Class S1s, numbered 6150 through 6174, and were built by the Lima Locomotive Works between 1923 through 1924. Continuing yet again with Lima, the S1As were numbered 6175 through 6199. In this case, 6175 that you see in front of you is a part of the S1 class and were built in 1926. And then the rest of the S1As were also built in 1926 and were numbered 6200 through 6224, but were built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works. In total, the B&O had over 200 Big Six 2102s in their fleet. The Big Sixes were designed to pull heavy drag freights along the B&O mainline and were used so and also used for shoving heavy freights up the stiff 2% grades over the sand patch at locations such as Manila, Mainz, Mainz and passing SA Tower at Sand Patch, Pennsylvania. These locomotives gave great performances and also gave great power, so both crews and train spotters alike enjoy watching the performance of a lifetime from these hefty 2102s. Even though the B&O enjoyed their over 200 locomotives of the S class, dieselization soon took over and these locomotives were put on less traveled routes such as the flat Toledo Akron and Chicago divisions and eventually terminated at Terminal in Willard, Ohio. By 1959, in the, night, in the late 1950s, the Baltimore and Ohio found themselves in a struggling position financially and decided to retire and scrap all of the S-Class locomotives instead of spending the money and preserving them like the rest of their heritage fleet that they decided to preserve over the years. Now let's take a deeper dive into the stats and facts that this model has to offer. This model was last released by Sunset Third Rail in December of 2003 and has a total measurement length of 26 inches and has a minimum curve radius of 072. Under the hood, this model isn't really well equipped as compared to a legacy engine of today's time, but does have a good amount of electronics. For instance, it has TMCC control system as well as TMCC rail sounds 4.0, a puff and chuff 2 smoke unit or a sleuth smoke unit, so most definitely keep it well filled or it'll burn up, and also has an EOB cruise control allowing the locomotive to continue to pull any size of a train up or down grade without slowing down or speeding up. Now let's take a closer look at all of the wonderful separately applied details that this incredible brass model has to offer. 
Starting at the front of the locomotive, here down below, you can see the pilot for this model, which is nicely detailed with a plated cow catcher, separately applied steps, brake hose, and also a copper cup bar with two separately applied flag stanchions on either side of it, and then finally in the middle, a separately applied scale dummy coupler that can be swapped out for an O-gauge coupler so you can double head it with any of your other B&O steam. Looking on up at the smoke box front, here you can see we have two separately applied ladder stanchions going up to either side of the running boards, two more separately applied steps, two separately applied marker lights, separately applied handrails, a nice looking brass bell with a nice looking frame, a headlight with a working light bulb inside with two numbered boards on either side and one below, a very nice Baltimore and Ohio shield in front of a nice looking smoke box door itself. However, the door itself is molded into the smoke box front plate and cannot open like most usual line of locomotives. Moving over to the engineer side of the locomotive, starting at the bottom, here you can see we have the locomotive's pilot wheels, which are nicely polished since they are brass, the first set of cylinders with some separately applied pipe work, the cross head, the beginning of the huge tin driving wheels, and then finally the Baker valve gear for this model and also the reversing linkage above it. Moving on up, on the side of the boiler here you can see we have the beginning of the running boards as stated earlier and also some pipage underneath it with a air tank underneath it as well. Looking at the boiler itself you can see the smoke box itself is in a correct dark graphite or gunmetal gray paint scheme and really does look good against the contrasting black of both the running, running board and the boiler itself. For details, here you can see we have two separately applied builder's plates, one designating 6175 as an S1A correctly, separately applied pipe work, one coming off of the first sand dome, two molded in steps leading up to said sand dome, and then also the beginning of some grab irons or handrails running along the length of the boiler. Continuing down the side of the locomotive, starting at the top this time, here again you can see that grab iron which continues along the side of the locomotive and eventually terminates towards the front of the cab. A second sand dome with yet more piping, some more separately applied piping going towards the top of the boiler itself, two more molded in steps, the continuation and termination of the running board with a nice little step coming down towards the front of the cab, more pipe work, the separately applied reverser for the Baker valve gear, the end of the huge 10 driving wheels, the pilot trucks which look very nice, and the firebox itself. Since this locomotive is a coal burner, it does have an ash pan underneath it, but in this case you can't really see it due to the dark shadowing. And then finally, looking at the cab itself, we've got some nice little details on the side, such as various rivet detailing, the number 6175 in nice gold lettering with S1A underneath it designating the locomotive's class, a nice hand-painted crew figure inside a window frame with clear plastic inserts and also a nice little wind resistor on the side and various other molded in and separately applied parts underneath the cab. Looking at the back of the locomotive, inside the cab, here you can see it is nicely lit with an incandescent bulb and is also nicely detailed with a good looking back head with two separately applied augers, a firebox, a separately applied throttle and various valves and gauges and two hand painted crew figures on either side of the cab. Looking outside the cab itself, here you can see we have a single window with a clear plastic insert, two separately applied grab barns on either side of it, in the middle a separately applied tender deck plate, and then underneath it an 8-pin socket for the tender connection, and then finally at the bottom the engine drawbar connecting the tender and the locomotive together. On top of the boiler, starting from the right and working over to the left, here you can see we have the smokestack for this model, which is nicely painted in a black and also riveted around the base, and also, as stated earlier, contains a sluice smoke unit, and in order to fill the smoke unit with smoke fluid, you just simply pour it directly down the stack. Continuing over, here you can see we have the first two sand domes with nice looking hatches above it, a piece of seam equipment, probably connected to the superheater, three hand-painted separately applied pop-off valves next to a separately applied shield, the steam dome which also has a hand-painted separately applied whistle with a separately applied lanyard connected to it, the last two sand domes similar to the first two with two hatches on top of them, the steam conduit, steam dynamo, and then finally the cab roof with rivet detailing, three hatches, the center one being molded in, and then the outer two being able to open and close like so.
And finally, taking a quick look at the fireman side of the locomotive, and as you can see, most of the details are the same as compared to the engineer side, but there are a few minute differences, such as a separately applied mechanical lubricator towards the fireman side cylinders, two separately applied air compressor pumps with the associated pipework, and then other various pipework towards the cab. Now that we've gone over all of the locomotive, let's move over to the tender that accompanies it. Starting at the front of the tender, here you can see we have two separately applied grab arms and ladder stanchions going up to the tender deck itself, the tender end of both of the eight prong plug, and also draw bar that connects to the locomotive. And then looking at the face of the tender itself, here you can see we have two molded in toolboxes and also two separately applied coal hatches that do move up and down, theoretically allowing a fireman to hand shovel the coal into the locomotive. Moving over to the engineer side of the tender, starting at the bottom, here you can see we have the two six truck side frames, pipe work, separately applied brake rigging, and also the nice looking Vanderbilt style water tank on the tender itself with molded in rivet detailing and gold Baltimore and Ohio along the side. Looking at the back of the tender, up top here you can see we have the reverse slide, which does come on when the locomotive is put into reverse, three separately applied grab irons, one on either side of the spherical tank, one underneath the headlamp, next to two separately applied ladders leading up to the upper deck of the tender, the number 6175 in that same Baltimore and Ohio gold paint scheme, a separately applied coupler cup bar, two separately applied brake hose details, and also two steps surrounding an electrocoupler for this model. In order to throw said electrocoupler, you simply need to use either your TMCC or legacy command system. And finally, taking a quick look at the top of the tender, here you can see we have a real coal load and a nice looking bunker, two separately applied grab irons that go along the nice looking wooden tender deck, a central water tank hatch, which does open and close like so, two separately applied marker lights, which do come on when the locomotive's in operation, and then two running boards along either side of the tender. Now that I've gone over both the locomotive and tender, let's fire up the locomotive and hear a sampling of the sound features. Alrighty, with the locomotive powered up, let's begin with the whistle. Next, here's the bell. Here is the steam blowdown sound. And finally, here is a sampling of the typical Rail Sounds 4.0 crew talk chatter. Alrighty, I got some freight cars hooked up behind the tender. We've been given the green signal, so let's take this engine for a spin around the layout.
that's about it for this product review, but before I go, let me go ahead and answer the two questions that I normally ask around this time of the video, and they are, what is the original MSRP price for one of these models, and also, what is my personal opinion about it? Well, to start off, the original MSRP price was quite hard to find, considering this model was made in 2003, so 19 years ago as the making of this video. I, however, got a good lucky break by finding an original third rail advertisement for this model, stating that this model would cost under $1,100. Considering this is a third rail product that is made out of brass, has a DC CAN motor, and also has TMCC command system and rail sounds, I think that is quite, re quite reasonable. Now, if you're interested in finding one of these models, you are most likely going to find one on the secondhand market, either it being through trains.com. I've seen trains selling a ton of Sunset Third Rail products from this era, and even newer ones, such as the Erie or Virginian Electrics, and I've seen them go around from about $700 to all the way up to $1,100, depending on the condition and also the likelihood of these models being around. So if you find one of these models around that $700 to $1,100 range, I would definitely say you've got a pretty good deal. Moving on to my personal opinion, I would say this model is probably one of my favorite models I've ever seen come out of a not really popular manufacturing company. I understand Sunset Third Rail started off as a small company of producing one-off locomotives in high detailed brass for two rail and then later even in third rail, which was incredible. And to really see something like this in person, even with TMCC, is just quite something special. I know lately the major manufacturers such as Lionel is getting into the brass hybrid trend of where you have the reliability of a die cast model with the extremely high detail count of a brass model but honestly i think for a model that is technically a hundred nearly a hundred percent brass without a die cast metal frame i'd say sunset third rail after 19 years of this locomotive being in existence you have done an incredible job and would be perfect for any baltimore and ohio fan out there or somebody even wanting to get into the brass high not even brass hybrid but into the brass market with an engine that actually has sounds, a great motor, and really just incredible amounts of detail for a reasonable price. Well, that's it for this video, but before you go, I just want to say thank you very much for clicking on this video and also watching it to the very end. It takes me a long time to produce a high quality video for you to enjoy, so I really do appreciate it. Now, if you would like to support my channel, please do click on the like button as that lets me know these product reviews are very likable as for you, the viewer. And also while you're at it, please do click on the subscribe button because that allows my channel to continue to reach out to many people out there who likes this hobby and also allows you to no longer miss any future videos that I produce coming up would probably be another steam engine of sorts. Anyway, my name is Trainmaster04, and I'll be seeing you next time.